Hey friends, it's Sonya Miller of Junk Monkey Paint Company and welcome back to my daily vlog. You're joining me in the garage. We just got out of the shower, we got our paint clothes on and now it is time to flip this beauty, this potential beauty behind me. She ain't looking so fine right now. Behold the piece I got for $5 you saw on yesterday's vlog. Part of a trio that I was happy to haul home. Honestly, the this piece is missing its drawers. The lady who sold it to me for all of $5 um, has no idea what happened to the drawers and that's okay because pieces like this are perfect to repurpose into like TV stands right consoles because you can store stuff whatever you want into there honestly guys I can put baskets in there as well which I think would be a really cool idea so the plan for this is to go ahead and paint her in our junk monkey milkshake milk paint today I'm gonna put some color on her figure out what we're gonna do here in just a second with that when I do these sorts of pieces I like to typically paint them dark inside right here where the drawers were because it creates a shadow it creates a darkened area and it's not something that I want to highlight the fact that the drawers are missing right so honestly right now I'm thinking black velvet for the inside right here and I'll figure out what we're gonna do for the outside and then baskets to go into it this will sit below my TV in my rec room and because of the fact that it is so I mean look at these big giant like complete pieces missing right you know she's already chippy as she is so you see how there's some like veneer right here that's left this is shiny this right here the veneer is missing it is down to just absolutely raw wood that's okay the cool thing is when I play up this piece with all of our dents and dings and use our chippy milk paint you know part of the milk paint's gonna fall off because I know that because this is glossy so I'm just going to embrace where it sticks where it chips because I think it will just play up with this piece overall. You know what I'm saying? So the color I'm gonna go with today, guys, out of all the colors I could go with, thinking about where this is, this piece is going to go, it's gonna be in my rec room. It's not a large, large area by any means. It's got other pieces of furniture in there, and I do not want this piece to feel gigantic, okay? So the darker the color that you go with, the bigger the piece is going to feel. So that's a tip if you're out there and you're somebody who's trying to fill up a space, you know what, going with darker colors is definitely gonna make the pieces feel more meaty. In my case, I'm gonna go with tea biscuit which is basically a beautiful like a creamy sort of color but it leans towards beige creamy so we're gonna go with that one today mixing our milk paint is really easy you just go with a equal equal parts ratio so if I put in one teaspoon of paint I put in one teaspoon of room temperature water In the first 10 minutes is when your water and your milk paint pigments, basically they come together to form your paint. So just be patient in the first few minutes. Make sure you whisk it together or spoon it together because you really want your pigments to blend and be nice and smooth. And you can really see that color, right? Definitely that beigey warm cream. I think it's gonna be beautiful. At any given time, if I want to water down my paint, honestly, I can grab some more and just add it little bit by little bit to get at the consistency that maybe you want to paint with. her dry so the cool thing about working with milk paint versus the chalky style paint which is the other line of paint we have miss petunia here that little girl monkey she is a wild one and she gives you the most amazing looks you just never know what you're going to get now you did see me flash up on the screen that I decided to add more water remember how I told you you can change the consistency of your uh, milk paint by adding more water that's what I did because I'm like I 
to play with this piece. I want to see what happens with more water that I put into the mix, the more fragile the milk paint becomes. And let's see if I get even more of a reaction or just really interesting looks. Because this piece, let's be honest, she's pretty broken, but we're going to play that up and be like, you know what? That was supposed to be there. So I just did a really, really light watery wash of the milk paint in this section. Do you see how it kind of ran, but yet it grabbed? So as it dries, like I'm loving this down here, this is cool, right? There's no law that says your project has to look a certain way. You know what, at the end of the day, you are the end decider. And if you love it, and if it makes your heart happy, then you have achieved ultimate success on your piece. To be honest with you, this makes my heart happy right here. Because the other thing I'm waiting for is some chippiness to happen because this piece is still wet. So now we let our milk paint dry and we wait for Miss Petunia, Miss Petunia, the wild monkey that, that can't keep still. We wait for her to give us some just amazing peeling and chipping. So I went really light over here in these two like basically doors because I really want some like funkiness going on right here and I definitely have achieved some of that already without her even drying and then I put like basically more of a, like a second wash of a coat over the frame but we're gonna see what plays up in here can't wait for that so now we wait well she is drying and I'm already starting to see Miss Petunia at work do you see this it's almost like when, um, you know, when the earth gets so dry, it just, it really just pulls apart, right? So as the air is getting to this and this is sucking in, giving way in parts, we're getting all this really cool stuff going on right here. So these are the knobs that I'm gonna put on this piece and they're like this teal green, really iridescent pretty color. And so I'm okay if a little bit of probably what looks like to be either Teal River or Bahama Jade, probably Bahama Jade, what does that look like to you guys? Gets onto this piece if it falls off this sand block and leaves me a little bit of that color, I'm gonna be able to live with that. Oh, look how that looks right there. Matt's the cameraman. So he's giving you all these up close. Oh, look at all that. Oh and personal views. This is just the best. Look at that. All right, should we do this like, this is what I call like when it volcanoes, it like peels up, right? Oh my gosh. Did you get that big old spot? Yes. This is the exciting part, right? Friends show friends the exciting part. There's some satisfaction that we get from doing this. One thing I love about the sealing process is the fact that when I put my sealer on, everything that I've muted down by sanding and also just even the pigments and the paint, everything just becomes like, it just all comes back to life. It just becomes so much more sharper. For example, this spot right here, when I get this sealed, I'll come back and show you this spot and you'll really be able to see the exaggeration of the color or that brownie frowny that's underneath there and that tea biscuit beigey color that's on the top of it. So that's a fun part about sealing that I always, always look forward to. So I'm gonna go with my banana peel. All right, our poly is drying, but, and remember that the poly dries clear, but can you already see the brownie frowny just really darkening up? Let's shine them up a little bit. One of the reasons why I like this color too is because these knobs have like this green, yellowish sort of cast to them, how they shine. So I knew that if I used this beigey warm color that it would really just complement it nice. So I love that. They are shined up, ready to go. Our piece is still drying just a little bit. You can still see some of the sheen. But yeah, there we go. So to think that we got this piece for $5, and if you need a TV stand out there, find a dresser, even if it's missing drawers, or a buffet, if it's missing you know, drawers, any of that stuff, 
you can still make something beautiful out of it. So at this point, guys, I did not take out just yet the black runners that go through here, but um, I'm gonna go out and shop for baskets and then see what I find and see how they fit and then I'll determine if I need to take these little um, doohickeys off right there. Easy peasy. And my friends, we are done. We're gonna let her just settle and sit and dry and I think she looks amazing. I can't wait to get her in place in my rec room and if you follow along on this vlog, you will see, you'll see that all go down as well. You know, I was just thinking that if I got baskets that were of this sort of, you know, natural sort of look to them, not like white or black baskets or anything like that. But if I go with something that's more of a natural tweed or twine, that sort of feel, it would match up so nice with that brownie frowny that we did allow to come through. So guys, thanks for hanging out with me in my garage for another daily vlog, getting creative. It's raining outside right now. There's no better place I'd rather be than in the garage getting creative on a rainy day and hanging out with you guys. We're gonna do it again tomorrow, so make sure you check back, subscribe if you haven't already, give me a thumbs up, and leave me a comment below. Have you ever repurposed and given new life to a dresser or a buffet that has been missing the drawers? Let me know. See ya.